Hi, I am Noemi S. Makaspak, an alumna of NUST San Isidro Campus. I graduated Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Mathematics last May 2019 and passed the boards on September 2019. For today, I will be discussing about arithmetic, business math, and number theory. So I hope that everyone will listen to me up until the very end. So for question number one, what we need to do is to test each of this, no? So for Roman numeral number one, sabi nito A and B are both add daw dapat for us to prove that this expression here above is correct. So the thing that we need to do is to assign values for A and B. Dito. So, sabi dito, they are both add. So, let's assume that A is 1 and B is 3. 1 and 3 are both odd numbers. No? And then, let's substitute our assigned values for A and B to this expression. And let's prove if yung makukuha nating sum is odd. Okay? So, we have the value of A is 1, B is 3, and then plus the value of B which is 3. 1 times 3 is 3 plus 3 the sum is 6. And 6 is not an odd number. How about yung Roman numeral number 2 natin? Sabi dito, A is even daw and B is odd. So, assign tayo ng values for A. So, let's say A is 2. B is 1. No? 2 is even. 1 is odd. And then, um, substitute natin yung values na inassign natin for A and B to this expression. So, A natin is 2. And then times natin sa value ng B which is 1. And then plus natin sa value ng B which is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1. The answer is 3. And 3 is an odd number. So si Roman numeral number 2 can be our answer. No, kasama siya sa mga pwede natin isagot. And then si Roman numeral number 3, let's test it. So, assign ulit tayo ng value. A is odd daw. So, let's say A is 1. B is even. So, let's say 2. No? And then, uh, substitute natin sila to this expression. So, we have 1 times uh, 2 plus 2. So, 1 times 2 is 2 plus 2. The answer is 4. And 4 is an even number. Therefore, sa choices natin, the answer should be letter B. It's Roman numeral number 2 only. For question number 2, we will be looking for the number of positive integers that are less than 60, which is a product of a multiple of 5 and an even number. So, dapat daw yung product nito is uh, less than 60. So, first thing that we need to do is to list down all the even numbers that we know. No, So, those are 2, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and then so on. And then, these even numbers, we need to multiply them um, to 5, no? Because 5 is a multiple of 5. So, let's multiply each number by 5. And let's see kung sino or ilan sa kanila yung product na less than 60. Should be less than, no? So, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And I believe yung mga uh, susunod na even number more than 60 na yan. So, you can stop and then choose which among these numbers are pasok dito sa hinahanap natin. It should be a positive integer na less than 60. No? So, 70 is not an answer. 60 is also not belong, no? Kasi... It should be less than 60 and not equal to 60, no? 
So, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, how many positive integers are that? So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we have 5 positive integers which are less than 60. So, the answer for question number 2 is B. For question number 3, we have a word problem. And, um... The exam took two parts, no? Yung una is first half and then second half. So, pag word problem, the first thing that we need to do is to write the given. So, we need to look for the value, I mean the time that he spent in the second half of the exam, as well as the first half of the exam, and yung entire time na na-spend niya to solve the exam. So, sa second half ng exam, walang given na binigay dito at all. So, let's assume that the time that he spent to finish the second half is X. No? Kasi walang given na binigay. And then, sa first half ng exam daw niya, uh, two-thirds ng second half, two-thirds of second half, yung time na nagamit niya to finish the first half. And then, he finished the entire exam within one hour. But then, we are looking for the number of minutes, no? So, i-convert na natin yung one hour sa minutes. So, that is 60 minutes. So, these are the given that we need to use in order for us to solve this problem. So, here, kailangan gagawa tayo ng equation using the given. So, we need to find the sum of the first half and the second half and equate it to 60 minutes. Kasi yun yung total time na nagamit niya to finish the exam. So, we have 2 third x plus x is equal to 60. So, yan yung equation na gagamitin natin to solve this problem. Now, here, what we need to first look for is the value of x para malaman natin yung time na nagamit niya for the first half. We can combine 2 third x and x, no? Kasi they have, um, or they are similar, no? They have the same literal coefficient. They are both x. So, 2 third x plus x will result to 5 over 3 x equals 60. So, bakit naging 5 over 3 yon? Si numerical coefficient ng x is 1, and 1 can be written in fraction as 3 over 3. And when you add these fractions, it will result to 5 over 3. And then copy x. So, 5 over 3x. So, here, para masolve natin yung value ni x, we can write the denominator of 60 as 1. And then, we can perform cross-multiplication. Assuming that x is beside the numerator. We have 5x equals 3 times 60 is 180. And then, divide natin both sides by 5 for us to be able to get the value of x. And this is 36. So, the time that he spent to finish the second half is 36 minutes. And then, for you to be able to get the time that he spent to finish the first half, pwede nyo i-multiply si 36 by 2 thirds or i-minus nyo na lang si 36 kay 60 minutes kasi yung remaining time, yun na yung nagamit niya for the first half of the exam. So, 2 thirds times 36, that is 24. He took 24 minutes to finish the first half of the exam. So, the answer is letter B. For problem number four, this is an example of problems regarding interest. And there are two types of interest pa. The first one is simple interest and then the second one is compound interest. As you can see, sa problem number four natin, um, the word compounded is there. It means that this problem, we can solve this using the formula for compound interest and that formula is this one wherein f stands for the final amount or value of the investment p is the principal investment amount the r stands for the rate and then letter n stands for 
the number of times that interest is compounded per year. There are words that we need to remember when we identify the value of n, and those are these words. So, so problem na mentioned dito that the amount is compounded semi-annually, no? So, it means that sa problem, the value of n is supposed to be 2. So, it depends sa given na problem din. Kasi, ayan, yung mga words na makikita nyo uh, when you encounter problems regarding compound interest. Pag nakita nyo na it is compounded annually, it means it is compounded once a year. So, the value of n is 1. If semi-annual, the value of n is 2. If quarterly, it means 4 times a year. So, the value of n is 4. If it's monthly, it means um, 12 times a year. And if it's daily, it's 365 a year. So, it depends sa words na makikita ninyo dun sa problem, yung value ni letter n. And then, the letter t, it means the number of years the money is invested. And the first thing that we need to do is to list down our given. So, P stands for um, the money that is invested. So, that is 200 pesos. And then, letter R is yung rate. Rate natin is 6% or rate na natin siya in decimal, that is 0 0.06. And then, letter N natin, according sa problem natin, it is compounded semi-annually, so 2 times a year. Letter T natin is, sabi dito, it is invested for 5 years. So, T is equal to 5. And then, using the formula, substitute lang natin yung mga given. So, we have F is equal to 200 times quantity 1 plus R natin is 0 0.06 all over um, n, which is 2, raised to the product of n and t, which is 2 and 5. So, we have f is equal to 200 and then times quantity 1 plus, simplify muna natin si 0 0.06 over 2. So, the answer is 0 0.03. And then, it is raised by the product of 2 and 5, that is 10. So, we have 200 times quantity, 1 plus 0 0.03 is simply 1.03 and it is raised to the 10th power. And then, simplify natin, C1.03 raised to the 10th power. So, the answer is um, 1.3439 and so on and so forth. You can straight up continue typing this in your calculator. So, times natin sa 200. So, the answer, the final amount that we get is 268.7832. So, as you can see, the answer that we get is wala dito sa choices. Okay? So, there, there are a lot of problems na katulad yan sa board exam. And if that's the case, the letter that you're going to choose is the closest to what you have computed. So, in this case, the closest answer to 268.78 is letter A, which is 268.80. Okay, so for question number five, we need to solve another word problem. And again, we need to write first the given. So, sabi dito, Karen agrees to pay twice as much as John. And Steve agrees to pay three times as much as Karen. But then, walang binigay na value for John. So, let's assume that yung babayaran ni John is X. No, And then, for Karen, she will pay twice as much as John, sabi dito. So, we need to double the X. So, just write 2X. And then, si Steve, he agreed to pay twice as much as Karen. So, yung 2X na babayaran ni Karen, titriplihin ni Steve. So, we need to multiply 2X by 3. And... They are going to buy a 1,350 pesos na 
stereo. So, these are the given in the problem. So, again, we need to form an equation for us to be able to find the answer. So, we need to combine this given. So, we have x plus 2x plus, simplify natin yung kay Steve. So, we have 6x is equal to 1,350 because ito yung babayaran nila. We need to add this. So, x plus 2x plus 6x. We can add this because they have similar literal coefficients. The answer here is 1 plus 2 plus 6. So, we have 9x equals 1,350. Always remember, pag walang numerical coefficient, that is equal to 1. So, 1 plus 2 plus 6 is equal to 9. And we need to divide the whole equation by 9 for us to be able to get the value of x. And then we need to divide 1,350 by 9 and the answer is 150 pesos. So, let's change our given here. So, si John, yung babayaran niya is 150 pesos for the stereo. Si Karen is 2 times ng kay John. So, 150 times 2 is 300 pesos. Si Steve is um, 6 times, bale, no? So, 150 times 6 is 900 pesos. But then, sa problem natin, we are just looking for the payment of Karen. So, the answer for question number 5 is 300 pesos, letter A. For question number 6, which of the choices could be a factor of this expression now given that n is a positive integer less than 3? So, let's assign values to n para masolve natin. So, the first value of n can be 1 and then the second can be 2. So, sila lang dalawa kasi sila lang yung positive integer that are less than 3, no? And then, let's substitute the values of n in this expression. And let's see what will be the answer. So, we have 1 times quantity 1 plus 1. So, 1 times 2. So, the answer for the first one is 2. And then, on the second one, we have uh, 2 times quantity 2 plus 1. So, we have 2 times 2 plus 1 is 3. So, 2 times 3 is 6. So, among the choices, 3 can be a factor of 6. Therefore, the correct answer is letter B. So, for question number 7, we need to simplify this expression here. So, yung mga ganitong expression, we can use gemdas in solving this. Or, if you do not know how to use gemdas, you can just click or type everything in your scientific calculator. And, I believe it will give you the correct answer, if I'm not mistaken, if the calculator is programmed correctly. Pero here... I'm going to teach you how to use GEMDAS to solve this expression. So, sa GEMDAS, the first thing that we need to do is to solve yung mga numbers or yung mga terms na naka-groupings. So, G is for groupings. So, here, solve natin muna yung terms inside the parentheses. So, we have uh, 8 plus 4 divided by E stands for exponent. So, simplify natin si 2 raised to the second power. And that will result to uh, 4. Multiplication is for M. Division is for D. So, we need to divide first before we add. So, 4 divided by 4 is 1. Tsaka pa lang natin niya add si 1 kay 8. So, 8 plus 1 will result to 9. So, rewrite natin yung given natin. 
And then here, solve in ulit natin yung nasa loob ng parentheses. Ngayon, as you can see, ayan, 5 times 9 divided by 3. Sa GEMDAS, yung multiplication and division, kahit alin dun yung mauna, interchangeable sila. So, we can just solve this ng dire-direcho. So, we have 5 times 9 is 45. Divide natin sa 3, that is 15. No? So, the answer here is 15. So, i-rewrite ulit natin sila. So, again, sa gem GEMDAS din, ang addition and subtraction is interchangeable. Ibig sabihin, kahit sino mauna sa kanila, it's fine. So, here we can just straight up solve this. No? So, we have 7 plus 15 is equal to 22 minus 5. The answer is 17. And 17 is letter C. For question number 8, alin daw dito sa mga description yung answer is positive. So, yung unang choice natin is the sum of two negative numbers. So, when we add integers and the given is may, may magkamukha na sign, the sign of the answer is the same as the given. So, when we add two negative numbers, ang sign ng answer niya is negative. So, definitely letter A is wrong. Yung letter B, the sum of a positive and a negative number, when you add integers na mayroong magkaibang sign, yung sign ng answer depende pa sa sign ng mas malaking number. So, yung letter B natin, we cannot identify if the answer here is positive kasi nga depende pa sa given. So, most probably letter B is also wrong, no? Kasi we are looking for the straight up positive na answer. So, letter C is the product of a positive and a negative number. So, when you multiply integers and they have different signs, the product is always negative. No? Pag magkaiba ng sign, when you multiply integers, negative. And then, letter D, the product of two negative numbers. Sa multiplication of integers naman, pag same sila ng signs, let's say they are both negative or they are both positive, the answer will always be positive. Therefore, the correct answer is letter D, the product of two negative numbers. For question number 9, how many members or elements of set A are factors of any elements of set B daw? So, isa-isahin natin yung mga members or elements ng set A. So, 0 is not a factor of any number here on set B. So, when we say, by the way, when we say factor, these are the numbers that when you multiply will result to a certain number. So, let's say I have 6. What are the factor of 6? It can be 1 and 6 because 1 times 6 is 6. Or it can also be 2 and 3. Yun yung mga factors. 1, 6, 2, 3. So, sila yun. So, 0 is not a factor of any number in set B. No? 1 is a factor of any number. Actually, 1 is a factor of all the members of set B. How about 2? Yes, then, because 2 is a factor of 2 and 10. Si 3, yes then kasi factor si 3 ng 9, because 3 times 3 is 9, okay? Si 4, hindi siya factor ng kahit anong number dito sa set B. Si 5, factor siya ni 10, no? Because 5 times 2 is 10. So, bilangin natin kung ilan. So, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, the answer is 4. That is the answer. Letter C. For question number 10, we need to find which among the choices is divisible by 3 and 11. So, we need to know the divisibility rules for 3 and 11. For 3, kailangan daw yung sum ng digits na given is divisible by 3. Pag 11 naman, if yung difference between the sum of the alternate digits is divisible by 11 daw. So, we need to test each choices para malaman natin kung sino sa kanila yung Divisible kay 3 at the same time divisible din kay 11. So, let's, let's test si letter A. So, let's see if it is divisible by 3. So, we need to add the digits. So, 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4 
plus 5. And the sum of this is 18, no? And 18 is divisible by 3. Because 18 divided by 3, that will result to a whole number 6. No? Meaning, na-satisfy niya yung unang condition. And it is divisible by 3. How about if it is divisible by 11? So, hanapin daw muna natin yung sum ng alternate digits niya. So, we have 5, 3, and 1. So, 5 plus 3 plus 1. This is 9. And then, the second one is uh, the sum of 4, 4, and 1. So, 4 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 9. And then, hanapin daw natin yung difference between these sums. So, 9 minus 9 is 0. And always remember, 0 is divisible by any number except by itself. So, therefore, we can conclude that 0 is divisible by 11 also. And letter A satisfied the second condition. Therefore, the answer is letter A. So, for question number 11, this word problem is an example of a partitive proportion. wherein Q is the quantity to be partitioned and the partitions are in the ratio of A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub 3. And then if you are looking for the value of a certain ratio, yung quotient na makukuha mo dito, ita times mo doon sa given na ratio na yun. But then, in question number 11, wala namang tinanong ano. Ang tinatanong lang is which of the following could be the total number of sacks in the drawer. So, we are looking for the value of the quantity to be partitioned. Okay? Which is, yun nga, the total number of sacks in the drawer. And yung given na ratio natin is uh, 4 is to 3. So, let's say we have P sub K is equal to Q. Huwag na natin to ilagay kasi wala namang hinahanap na value ng isang ratio sa problem. Over the sum of your ratio, no, which is 4 plus 3. And 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. Now, para mahanap nyo yung value ng quantity to be partitioned, it should be divisible by 7. So, among the choices that we have, which among these choices are divisible by 7? And napakadali lang kasi 7 is divisible by 7. So, 7 is the answer and that is letter B. For question number 12, this problem can be also solved using uh, this expression regarding partitive proportion. No? So, let's write the given first. So, we have E is to F is to G. And E stands for like 1. And yung F natin is 5. So, ratio and then G is 6. And then the real value of G is 18. No? So, G is equal to 18. So, bakit kaya naging ganon? So, let's uh, revise this expression here. So, P sub K is equal to what number kaya yung minultiply natin kay G, which is sa ratio is 6 yung equivalent niya, kaya siya naging equal sa 18, which is its real value, no? So, most probably that is 3. So, without knowing what is the value of Q, we assume that the quotient here is 3 kasi when we multiply 3 by 6, which is the G, no? That will result to 18. And G is equal to 18 is the given. So, for us to be able to find the values of the other ratios, multiply din natin sila sa 3. So, multiply natin sila lahat sa 3 and then yung ratio na given. So, si F is 5 and then si E is 1. So, the real value of F is 15 and then the value of E is 3. And then... 
solve down natin yung difference between F and E. So, F minus E. So, let's solve no? using what we've computed na value ni F and, uh, sorry, it should be E. So, F natin is 15 minus the value of E is 3. The answer is 12. Okay? And 12 is letter D. So, for question number 13, this word problem is an example of indirect or inverse proportion. So, first, let's assign the given. We have 27 women and they can finish the building within 15 days. And then, um, how many women, so let's say N, because we are looking for the number of women, is needed to clean the same building within nine days so let's substitute this given to this terms here so let's say x sub 1 and x sub 2 is the number of women no so the first value ng women is x sub 1 so that is 27 over and later yan x sub 2 is n because we are looking for the value of women or dun sa second na given, no? Si y sub 2 is yung number of days na pangalawang given sa problem, which is 9. And then, si y sub 1 is yung number ng days na nauna sa given, which is 15. And then, for us to be able to solve it, we need to cross multiply. So, we have 9n equals 27 times 15 is equal to 405. For us to get the value of n, divide natin both sides by 9 and n is equal to 405 divided by 9. That will result to 45. So, the answer is 45 women. Okay? So, sa inverse proportion po, if the value of x increases, the value of y decreases. Or if the value of x decreases, the value of y increases. So here, di ba, we have 27 women na kailangan dun sa unang given. Matatapos nila yung building within 15 days. But then, nung binabaan yung number of days, tumaas yung number ng women na kailangan para malinis yung isang building. So yun, kaya siya inverse or indirect proportion. So, for question number 14, this problem here is an example of a problem regarding simple interest. So, there are two types of interest. The first one is simple interest. The second one is compound interest. Ngayon, sa problem, hanggat wala kayo nakikita na compounded, yung term na compounded, hindi yun compound interest. That is just a simple interest. So, here... Um, this is the formula that we are going to use regarding simple interest. No, So, I stands for interest is equal to P stands for the principal, R is for rate, and T is for the time no? given. So, I is equal to P, R, T. So, first po na kailangan natin gawin is to write the given. So, the principal is yung amount ng money na um, deposit ni Aziz sa bank. So, that is 5,000 pesos. And then, yung R natin is the rate of interest which is 5% per annum or per year. And this 5%, we need to convert this into decimal. So, move lang natin yung decimal point two times to the uh, left side. So, that will result to 0 0.05 or C5, you divide mo sa 100 para maging decimal number siya. Okay? So, next is yung time na given sa problem. That is 3 years. And then, we can now substitute using our formula. So, I is equal to uh, the product of 5,000, uh, 0 0.05, and 3 years. So, we have no problem kasi ang interest naman is uh, per year, no? Five, yung 5% na interest per year. So, we can just write yung 3 mismo. 
So the answer, the interest within three years is 750 pesos. And 750 is letter B in the choices. Ngayon, there are some problems regarding simple interest na uh, ang given na time is like four months. No, additional knowledge lang. So kapag halimbawa, papalitan ko to gagawin ko na how much yung interest nakikita niya within a uh, 6 months lang. No. If that is the given, yung time na isusulat nyo when you substitute that in the formula is kailangan fraction siya. So this will be 6 over 12 kapag months yung given. No? Bakit over 12? Kasi yung rate ng interest niya per year. And how many months are there in a year? There are 12 months. So, we have 6 over 12. So, ganun. Pero sa problem natin ngayon, we have no problem kasi um, yung interest rate niya is yearly or per annum. And then, yung given na time niya is in years then. So, we can just straight up get the answer. So, for problem number 15, 32 is 40% of what number? So, these types of problem, we can solve this using our magic triangle, which is this one. So, P stands for the percentage. So, even though percentage yung tawag sa kanya, yung values nito is kadalasan whole number or it, or it can be also a decimal number. As well as yung base, no? It can be a whole number or a decimal number. Um, and always remember that base is always greater than the percentage. Kasi si percentage, part lang siya ng base. Galing lang siya doon sa value ni base. Si rate, siya yung um, may percent na sign doon sa given. So, dito sa problem na to, our given is 32 and 40%. And we can assume na si 40% yung rate natin. And si 32, siya yung ating percentage. Kasi ang hinahanap natin is yung number na pinagkuhanan kay 32. Kasi si 32, part lang ng number na yon. Si 32, 40% lang ng number na yon. So, therefore, we are looking for the value of our base. So, using this magic triangle, ang pagkuha po ng value ni base is B is equal to P over R or or P divided by R. Wherein yung rate natin kailangan always siya naka-convert into decimal. So, si 40% convert natin sa decimal, it is equal to 0 0.4. So, for us to find the base, we need to divide 32 by 0 0.4. And the value of our base now is equal to 80. So, that is the answer. 80 is letter C in the choices. For question number 16, we have this expression. And we can solve this one by, you know, using scientific notation. So, if naalala nyo pa siya, yung scientific notation... Um, it is the movement of the decimal point lang, no? Sabi doon, if yung sign nung exponent ni 10 sa given is positive, yung movement ng decimal point is to the right side. Kapag naman negative yung sign ng exponent ni 10, ang movement ng decimal point ay to the left side. And kung ilan yung number ng movements, depende din sa exponent ni 10. Okay? So here, um, it is negative, so imove natin yung decimal point ni 46.2 to the left side two times kasi negative 2 yung exponent. So we have 46.2, imove natin two times to the left. So from here, 1, 2, dito na mapupunta yung decimal point, and then just add 0 here. So the answer for problem number 16 is 0 0.462. And this is letter B in the choices. So for problem number 17, a box daw in a bookstore contains books and we have history, English, as well as mathematics book. So 
the fraction of history books and English books are given and we are looking for the fraction of mathematics book. So we can solve this problem using operations on fraction. Let's write the given. So one third of the books in the box is history books, no? And one over six are English books. So for us to be able to get what fraction are mathematics books, we need to add this uh, fractions and then the sum, we need to subtract it from 1. The equation should be, or the expressions should be like this one. So 1 minus the sum of 1 third and 1 over 6. And kapag nasolve natin to, that is the fraction of mathematics book. So we have 1 minus, uh, i-add muna natin si um, 1 third and 1 six. So these are the similar fractions. So we need to find the LCD uh, no? to form new fractions. So LCD ni 3 and 6 is 6. So I'm going to show you how to compute this manually, but then you have your scientific calculator, so you can just type it in your scientific calculators, and you will get the answer. So here, 6 divided by 3 times 1, that is 2, and then 6 divided by 6 times 1, that is 1. And then we have 1 minus 2 plus 1, that is 3 over 6, or 3 over 6 actually can be written as 1 half, pero sige, wag na natin isulat as 1 half. So now, we need to subtract 3 over 6 sa 1. But then, si 1, we can rewrite 1 as 6 over 6 following the denominator of 3 over 6 para mas madali natin siya masubtract kasi they will become similar fractions. So we have a 6 minus 3, that is 3. And then copy the denominator. 3 over 6 can be written simply as 1 half. Therefore, the fraction of mathematics books in the box is 1 half. And 1 half is letter B. For question number 18, we need to find the difference between the place values of two eights in this given. So, we need to first find each place value ng dalawang eight. So, kapag sinabi nating place value, any number dito sa given natin will be zero except the number that we are looking for the place value. So, una nating hanapin yung place value ng first number eight. So, that is 8,000. And then, yung place value nung pangalawang number 8, which is 80. So, we need to subtract 80 from 8,000. And the answer is 7,920, which is letter B in the choices. So, sometimes kasi, there are some confusions that's happening between place value and place number. So, when we say place value, ganyan yung gagawin ninyo. Everything will become 0 except the number that you are looking for, the place value. Okay? Kapag naman place number, uh, that is yung mga ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So, yun yun. And we need to look for a positive integer which when added to 865 will be greater to their product. So, this question is like a common sense na question. Why? Kasi taking a look at the choices, no? So, kapag minultiply natin sa 865 kay 3, and kapag in natin siya kay 3, the product will always be greater than the sum. As well as dun sa choice letter C, and dun sa letter D. But then, observing yung letter A, which is 1, Let's see, no? Yung product ni 865 and 1 is 865. Why? Any number that you multiplied by 1, the result will be itself. But then, when you add 1 
to 865. The answer is 866. And 866 is greater than 865. Therefore, here, hindi niya na kailangan i-multiply or i-add lahat ng sa choices. It's kind of like a common sense na the answer here is 1. The answer is letter A. For question number 20, so this is a word problem. So identifying the given, our rate is 65% according sa problem. Convert na natin siya, gawin natin decimal, so that is 0 0.65. And then um, the total number of games is 160. So when we, when we talk about the total amount of something in a problem regarding percentage, no, that is the base. 160 and then we are looking for the percentage let's derive our formula here in the magic triangle percentage is equal to the product of base and rate so we have um, 160 times 0 0.65 so you multiply lang natin using our calculators and the answer that we will get is 104 so um 104 games yung napanaluna nila over 160 nung soccer team. That is letter B in the choices. For question number 21, we need to change this non-terminating and repeating decimal into a fraction. So pag sinabing non-terminating, ibig sabihin hindi humihinto yung mga values ng decimal numbers. And repeating siya kasi napapansin ninyo, yung decimal number dito is puro 2, paulit-ulit. So how can we change this into a fraction if it's non-terminating as well as repeating? So the thing that we need to do is we need to make two equations. The first equation, kunin lang natin dito sa given. So let's say we have x is equal to our given. So 8.222 and so on. And then the second equation is we need to derive using the given again. But then we need to move the decimal point to the right side of this given. So one movement only. Bakit isang movement lang? Kasi isang um, number or isang decimal decimal number lang yung umuulit dito sa given. If, halimbawa, 163, 163, there are three movements. Kasi three decimal numbers yung umuulit. Pero in this case, kasi isa lang. So, isang movement lang ng decimal point. And then, yung isang movement na yun, that is equivalent to 10, no? And then, lagay natin, imbis na x, 10x yung ilalagay natin. No? Pag dalawang movement, that is 100x. Pag tatlo, 1000x. It depends sa movement. And then, 10x is equal to kung ano yung decimal na mafoform right after natin minove ng isang beses sa right yung decimal point. And that is 82.222 and so on. Then, right after this, we need to subtract the equation 1 from equation 2. So, what will happen is this. So, we have 10x equals 82.2222 and so on minus x equals 8.2222 and so on. So, here yung mga decimal numbers natin, it is automatically cancelled. No? Zero na yung lalabas na answer dyan. So, dito, next, kailangan natin isolve 10x minus x, that is 9x, equals 82 minus 8, that is 74. And then, we need to divide both sides by 9. And then, x is equal to 74 over 9. Now, um, you're just going to observe if it is already in simplified form or meron pa silang common factor. In this case, wala naman ng common factor si 74 and 9. Therefore, when you change this non-terminating and repeating decimal into fraction, the answer is 74 over 9. Ngayon, if you have... 
um, doubts kung tama yung sagot nyo, try nyo i-divide si 74 kay 9. Dapat yung lalabas na sagot is 8.22222 and so on. Therefore, the answer is 74 over 9 and that is letter B in the choices. For question number 22, we need to find the HCF or the highest common factor of 135 and 225. So, para masolve natin what is the value of their HCF, we need to use Euclid's division lemma. So, division lemma states that given two positive integers a and b, there will exist the unique integers q and r satisfying this equation, which is A equals B times Q plus R, wherein A stands for the dividend, B is the divisor, Q is for the quotient, R is for the remainder. So what we need to do is to um, divide 225 by 135 and then uh, find the quotient as well as the remainder. So in this case, Pag natin si 135 by 2, that will result to 270 and that is over the dividend. So, we will assume or we will answer that the quotient here is 1 and then um, multiplying the divisor and the quotient, subtract natin siya dun sa dividend. So, 225 minus 135, the remainder is 90. And then, next step is yung divisor natin here, siya na yung magiging dividend. So, 135 will be the dividend, and then the remainder here will be our divisor. And then, proceed lang tayo, kunin natin yung quotient. So, here, assume din natin na yung quotient is 1, hindi kasi pwede si 2 kasi 90 times 2 is 180, and that is over 135. Okay. So, 90 times 1 is 90. Subtract natin si 90 from 135 for us to know what is the remainder. So, the remainder is 45. Okay, and then repeat the process. Si, si divisor, which is 90, siya na yung magiging dividend. So, 90 and then the remainder here will be the divisor, 45. And then divide natin si dividend by the divisor. And we will get a quotient of 2. And this is equal. Therefore, kapag nag-equal na yung equation mo here, yung last na divisor, siya yung highest common factor or HCF no given natin. So here, the answer is 45. And that is letter B in the choices. So, for question number 23, Jeremiah divided his 210 chocolate kisses into bags containing the same number of kisses. So, lahat daw ng choices could be the number of kisses except. So, for us to be able to find the answer here, the thing that we need to do is to divide 210 by each choices. And then, kapag whole number yung quotient, therefore, that can be the number of chocolate kisses. So, when we divide 210 by 35, the answer is 6. So, letter A can be the number of chocolate kisses. When we divide 210 by 21, the answer is 10. It can also be the number of kisses. When we divide 210 by 20, the answer is actually a decimal. So, it cannot be the number of kisses. Ang kailangan na maging quotient is a whole number para even yung distribution ng chocolate kisses. When we divide 210 by 15, the answer is 14. So, it can also be the number of kisses. Therefore, the answer here for this problem is letter C. Or in short, dito sa problem na to, you're going to look for the factors of 210 and the factors of 210 can be the number of cases per bag eh. Yung hindi factor ng 210, yun yung tamang sagot. And in this case, that is 20. Letter C.
For question 24, we have a word problem. So, in a sequence of starts and stops, the, the elevator travels from the first floor to the fifth floor. So, here, from the first floor to the fifth floor. So, we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we have, sa una, we have 4 movements na. Okay? And then, from the fifth floor, nag-travel ulit. To the second floor. So, from here, nagpunta sa second floor. So, 1, 2, 3. So, plus 3 movements. So, currently, nasa second floor ka. From the second floor, the elevator travels again to the fourth floor. So, from here to the fourth. So, ilang movement? 1, 2. So, plus 2. And then, from the fourth floor, nag-travel ulit. To the third floor. So from here, nag travel to here. So that is one movement. So if the floors are 3 meters apart daw, how far has the elevator traveled? So yung movements na nilist daw natin kanina, let's get their sum. So 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, the answer is 10. So we solve 10 movements. Yun ang yari. And if each floor measures 3 meters times natin si 10 by 3 meters. So, the answer is 30 meters. No, yan yung na-travel overall ng elevator. So, 30 meters is letter C in the choices. For problem number 25, sabi dito, Miguel divides his 5 hours to study math, English, and science. So, tandaan po yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng subjects kasi yan din yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng given na ratio. So, in this case, yung 5 dun sa ratio, dun siya sa math, no? Yung 2 dun siya sa English, and yung 3 dun siya sa science. So, this word problem is again an example of a partitive proportion. So, ito yung given na ratio, no? 5 is to 2 is to 3, and he spent 5 hours to study this 3 subject. So, in this case, we can use this formula. So, P sub, we are looking for the time he spent in mathematics. So, P sub, yung K natin is yung ratio na binigay dun sa mathematics. So, P sub 5 is equal to the quantity to be partitioned is 5 hours. So, 5 over um, the sum of the ratios. So, sulat muna natin. 5 plus 2 plus 3. And then, times natin sa 5. We have P sub 5 is equal to 5 over the sum of 5 plus 2 plus 3. The answer here is 10. No? And then, times natin siya sa 5. So, so, here, para ma-multiply natin, lagyan natin ang denominator si 5. That is over 1. And then, we can use um, yung cancellation method para hindi niya na-simplify sa bandang dulo sa fraction. No? So, this is 1. This is 2. So, P sub 5 is... 5 over 2. So, when we write this into our answer, kasi ang hinahanap how many hours eh. So, it can be 5 over 2 hours or decimal, no? So, this is equivalent to actually 2 and a half hours or 2.5 hours. And this is your answer. So, letter D in the choices. For problem number 26, what is the unit's digit of 3 raised to 100? First, bago natin makita yung pattern, let's um, expand this given. No? So, simulan natin sa 3 raised to 0 and then simplify natin siya. This is 1. 3 raised to 1 is 3. 3 raised to 2 is 9. 
3 raised to 3 is uh, 27. 3 raised to the 4th power is 81. And then um, 3 raised to the 5th power is 243. And then continue natin. 3 raised to the 6th power is 729. 3 raised to the 7th power is 2187. And then 3 raised to the 8th power is um, 6561. And then let's stop there. No, So take a look at the digits. Yung mga nasa ones na places. So, napansin nyo, dito sa una, we have 1, 3, 9, and 7. And then, kung mapapansin ninyo, sa mga susunod na value, umulit lang siya. We have 1, 3, 9, 7. And then, uulit-ulit lang siya. Yung mga values ng ones, pag sinimplify yung mga expression na to, paulit-ulit lang yung mga values na yon. So, the pattern here is 1, 3. 3, 9, and 7. Yung mga 1's to, no, no answer. Yung mga digits na nasa dulo. So, therefore, pag kinuha natin yung units digit ng 3 raised to 100, so, 100 yung exponent niya, no? And yung pattern natin is apat. So, 1, 3, 9, 7, 1, 3, 9, 7, 1, 3, 9, 7. So, si 100, divide natin siya sa 4 which is yung number ng pattern natin, no? And it will result to 25, which is exact. So, ibig sabihin yan, yung pattern na to na apat, and then hanggang sa maging 100 siya, na hindi naman na natin isusulat, babalik lang siya sa 1. Therefore, yung units digit ng 3 raised to 100 is 1. Kasi, 25 na ulit yung pattern na yan, no? Para makuha nyo yung 3 raised to 100 na unit digit na niya. So, isipin nyo, bilangin nyo na 25 na ganyan. Yung pang 100, or pang 3 raised to 100, babalik lang siya sa 1. So, therefore, the answer is 1, and that is letter A. So, for question number 27, it is about modular arithmetic, no? So, sa modular arithmetic, always remember yung um, mga terms na yan. So, yung term na nasa left side ng expression, that is the dividend. And then, yung term na nandito is yung remainder. And then, yung term inside the parenthesis, that is the divisor. So, here sa problem na to, para mas mabilis natin hukuha yung value ni n, let's subtract yung remainder from the dividend. Okay? So, 23 minus 3 is equal to 20. And then, let us find kung saan divisible si 20. Or, hahanap tayo ng factor ni 20 dito sa choices. So, factor ba ni 20 si 2? Yes. Factor ba ni 20 si 3? No. When you divide 20 by 3, hindi naman whole number yung answer. As well as 23 and 40. They are greater than 20, so it is impossible na factor sila ni 20. Therefore, the answer is letter A. So in our next problem, sabi, what is left when 1,024 books are divided equally among 11 students? So we can use modular arithmetic. No? So, 1,024 is congruent to what we are looking for is the remainder. No? So, n mod 11. So, just divide 1,024 by 11 and then what's left is the remainder. So, when we divide 1,024 by 11, it will result to 93. And then, 11 times 93 is actually equal to 1,023. So, the remainder here is 1. So, then divide lang po si 1024 by 11 and then 93 yung sagot. When we multiply 93 by 11, it will result to 1023 and then ang naiwan is 1. Yun na yung answer natin, no? 1 
remainder is 1, and that is letter B in the choices. For question number 29, so which of the following is the remainder when we divide A by 4 if, and then this expression is written in the question. So it is kind of tricky lang yung tanong, no? Kasi inulit lang niya yung parang binasa lang niya tong expression na to. But then, katulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, you should know yung tawag dito sa mga terms na to. So this is the dividend, this is the remainder, and this is your divisor. So among the choices, which is the answer kaya? So it is common sense no sa expression na binigay dun sa question, yung B na variable, yung remainder of course. So the answer is letter B. For the last question, it says here, what is the remainder when 2 raised to 100 is divided by 101? So when you try to type it in your calculator, no, it will give you infinity or infinite numbers. So, walang lalabas na answer. This type of problem kasi, we can solve this using Fermat's theorem or Fermat's little theorem. According to him, a raised to p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, wherein a should not be a multiple of p and p is a prime number. Okay? So, let's test if um, our given satisfy Fermat's theorem. So, our dividend is 2 raised to 100. Diba? And let's say it is congruent to 1 mod our divisor is 101. First of all, let's check if our divisor is a prime number. So, 101 is actually a prime number. So, na-satisfy niya yung unang condition. And then, sabi dito, yung exponent dapat ni dividend is the difference of the value of the divisor and 1. So, let's say if 100 yung lalabas, if sinubtract natin, C1 from 101. So, 101 minus 1 is 100. So, tama. Nasatisfy niya yung pangalawang condition. Therefore, this problem can be solved using Fermat's little theorem. And if this is the case, automatically the remainder is 1. So, the answer is letter A. So, that's it! Thank you for listening carefully. And even though I know that these 30 questions aren't enough to cover up everything about arithmetic, business math, and number theory. But I hope that these questions will somehow help you in the future, especially in our major shift. And always remember that I am one of the many people who believes that you can pass the board examination. Soar high and make us proud. Thank you.